peat soils have been classified as high risk for effluent irrigation, but some farmers are not convinced this is necessarily correct. Little research has been done on the actual impact of effluent nutrients applied to peat soils, so a sustainable farming fund project has begun in Waikato, looking at nitrogen and phosphorus movements into and out of peat soils. The project began when we had concerns about how accurate the current science was in terms of coming up with the recommendations in terms of the size of lagoons that we were going to have to be building on peat and that was to do with whether our soils are classified as high or low risk because the high risk lagoon is considerably bigger than the low risk lagoon and therefore there is a considerably more cost involved. So we wanted to make sure that we were making the correct decisions on accurate modern science. Currently we've got a joint partnership with about half a dozen peat farmers, Dairy NZ, Ag Research, Land Care Research, Waikato Regional Council and Balanced Agri-Nutrients who are all contributing to the total project. All peat farmers are going to have to build some sort of storage capacity so that when the soil conditions are saturated that, that they are storing the effluent and then only irrigating when the soil is in ideal conditions. So this is the latest challenge. We've also got the challenge of a high water table through the winter and spring period, so that makes it difficult to irrigate over those periods. We've also got management issues with peat soils in terms of they do dry out in summertime and they require careful management. And there is also a problem, well not, not so much a problem, but a, a new issue that's I guess peat farmers are only becoming just aware of is consolidation of peat and peat soils actually getting shallower and shrinking as a, with a drop in the um, amount of organic matter in it. And so this is going to have implications for um, drainage. So this is possibly a new issue that we might be looking at as well. Peat soil is really just organic matter. That's how it's very different from, we'll call it a mineral soil. Peat soil is just where there's been a spot that has very poor drainage and so water's built up. And so in normal circumstances where you have organic matter building up and breaking down and building up and breaking down. That's the normal process, but when you've got a high water table, it doesn't break down, so it just keeps building up and up and up and up, and you ended up with, in some places like here, you've got um, meters and meters of peat. Hey guys, how's, how's this all going? Oh, it's good. It's going really good. Harry's farm is what we call a fibrous peat, so it's quite recent. You still see a lot of the original organic matter that never broke down, you still see all the remains of that. You can see sticks, you can see leaves, and that goes down quite a ways. Whereas on the other farm that we're looking at, it's been under farming for a lot longer. Um, all you really see is at the top layer, you see this nice fluffy dark soil and you can't actually discern any bits of the original organic matter. We got in contact through Darian Zed with a, a peat farming group here in Gordonton and sort of proposed the idea that maybe we should go in for one of these sustainable farming fund projects. And so we all had to agree what the purpose was and put the project together. Since we've got the funding, we've done a nitrogen trial in the spring. We put nitrogen down in September on this farm at Rainy Downs and also on a farm in Gordonton. So what we did is we put down a, a range of different rates of nitrogen from zero up to 100 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. So what usually happens is you get your greatest growth from the 25 and you get a bit more at 50 and maybe a little bit more at, at 75 and 100, but it kind of diminishes. You kind of get a curve that looks like that. And that's pretty much what we see on most mineral soils as well. But at this site, we had almost a linear increase. Um, we put down 25 and you got so much growth. And when you put on 50, you got twice that, and then up to 75, you got three times the growth. So there's a big difference between nitrogen availability here. It was just so hungry for it. We're gonna try and develop a tool to help farmers and consultants sort of distinguish between the different types of peat, and we're working on that now, so we'll also have that as an opportunity to kind of get some feedback into the program. So today we've got the team out and they are mowing off the, the grass that's been growing here. So we haven't applied any treatments to it yet, but they have to just take off the grass that's grown there so far. And what they're gonna do is gonna go and mow two strips down the middle of each plot. So we've got five 
blocks with five plots in each, and we're going to be putting five different rates of nitrogen to it, and one plot in each block. So we've got rates of zero, um, 25, 50, 75, and 100 kilograms of nitrogen going on to each separate plot. So they'll be mowing through the center of each strip and measuring how much grass has been growing on, on those plots. And what they're also doing today is they've been taking soil samples and they're taking soil fauna counts. In the spring, at this site, we measured the equivalent of five earthworms per squared meter. And at the other site, with a more developed peat, there was uh, the equivalent of 300, uh, 300 worms per square meter. So there was a huge difference in the amount of biological activity in the soil at the different sites. So that was really interesting. I'm really hoping that we're just able to give farmers more advice about what they should be doing for nitrogen fertilizer and also for their effluent application and also just to have more information out there about nitrogen phosphorus losses from peat soils because there hasn't been a lot of work and that's all becoming very important with like the Healthy Rivers program. Everyone needs to know how much nutrient they're losing and sometimes it's nitrogen, sometimes it's phosphorus, but for peat soils it's, it's still a bit unclear what the actual losses are and, and the farmers are meant to help try and reduce that, it's not exactly sure because these are unique soils, what's the best way to do that? <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.